Rev up your engine! It's a 2020 Volkswagen Jetta. And as usual, I'm gonna give you the truth. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, if you followed me for any length of time, you know I'm not a big fan of VWs. High expensive bills, a lot of plastic crap on them. Well, here is the absolute truth about one of these new Jettas. Now I have to say, I've been driving around, it's a fun car to drive. It handles well, zippy enough, this one's got an automated transmission. The steering is absolutely flawless. It has the lightest steering I've ever seen. It's electronic power steering. And they hit the nail on the head. The base model of this Jetta, $19,000 or so, it's about $700 cheaper than a Toyota Corolla. And this, of course, is the luxury edition. So this particular one is $28,000. They're not giving these away. This is the high-end one. But as an advantage, the low end and the high end Jetta, they got the same engine. And that is both the good and the bad point. It's a little 1.4 liter engine with a turbocharger on it and gasoline direct injection. It puts out 147 horsepower regardless of which version you buy, it's the same engine. Now consider that this engine is a smaller displacement than the later model Beetles. You get the Beetle engine, it put out like 60 horsepower, this puts out 147 horsepower. So it puts out Plenty enough horsepower for this thing to be zippy to drive around it. And in this case, it's hooked up to their 8-speed DSG transmission. Since it has 8 speeds, they're closer ratio. So, take it you're just cruising along like I was on a highway the other day. And you want to pass a big semi. When you floor it, it's not the usual Ooh, races up like mad to pass it. It's got such close ratio gears that it wasn't bad and it took off quite quickly. They're fun to drive. But that same fun comes with a cost. Believe it or not, this little 1.4 liter engine, they went back to a timing belt, not a timing chain. If you know anything about late model Volkswagen engines, they had some problems with the timing chains breaking. So in this case, this 1.4 liter turbo engine, they went back to a timing belt. Now Volkswagen claims it's a very fancy belt. I see they cost about $183. And they say that it's a lifetime belt. That it's good for the lifetime of the engine. Well, whatever that means. Still, it is a belt. At some point in time, if you keep them, you're gonna have to replace the belt. Or, since this is an interference engine, if you drove it a long way and the belt did break, the pistons will hit the valves, break them, goodbye engine. And you might think, oh, it's just a tiny belt, no big deal. All right, the way this thing is designed, it's so complex. Mechanics charge well over $1,000 to change the tiny belt on this thing. It isn't just that the belt costs 183 bucks. It's that it takes many hours to tear the engine apart to do it correctly. So it's an expensive endeavor. And although the Volkswagen engineers say it's a lifetime belt, well, yeah, the lifetime of the engine. When it breaks, goodbye engine. Check the warranty. Once the warranty's up, it's on your dime, not theirs. So they can say whatever they want about lifetime. As far as I'm concerned, that's no different than them saying that, oh, the automatic transmission fluid is lifetime. Because when the warranty's gone, hey, if the transmission goes out because the fluid got too dirty and started to ruin things over 100 200,000 miles, they're not going to give you another transmission free. So, you have to keep that in the back of your mind with one of these things. I believe these engines have been out about four years. I haven't seen any particular problems with them yet. It is fun to drive. I'm not arguing that. But, something to keep in the back of your mind if you're one of those people who like keeping your cars forever. Me, I'd rather have the Corolla engine. It's got a timing chain that might last three, four hundred thousand miles than a little 1.4 turbo with all that strain that's got a timing belt that they claim is lifetime, but it's in an interference engine. Now, if it would have been in a non-interference engine, you wouldn't care because if it did break, then you just have to take it apart and put another belt on. But in this case, it's an interference engine with a turbo. So if you're spinning down the highway and that belt did break, goodbye engine. And in most cases, by then, goodbye car. Nobody's going to put that kind of money into one of these things. It is modern technology. A lot of companies are going to these smaller engines with turbochargers. And it runs fine when it's running. I would kind of guess from what I've seen of the ones that have been out for four years. If you're happy with 100,000 miles out of a car, it's not gonna break before then. If you're gonna keep a car forever, you kinda wonder about this design. But on the plus side, if you look in here, this isn't one of these everything's cramped in. There's the turbocharger. It's right here. You could bolt it on and off easily. To work on this thing, there is plenty of room. 
because if you think about it, you put a little engine in there, this is going to have a lot of room. And speaking of room, let's check out the trunk. Nice deep trunk, no arguing. A lot of room in this car. It's got a big trunk. We'll check the back seat. Got some decent room in the back seat. I fit in quite well. A lot of room, it's comfy. You can squeeze a third passenger in. And as you can hear, it's pretty solid construction. It isn't flimsy. Just realize that, yes, this thing was made in Mexico. They're all trying to keep costs down. Let's face it, labor's cheap in Mexico. They build a lot of cars in Mexico now. Just realize that Volkswagens have been making cars in Mexico for more than 60 years. They've been doing it a long time down there. They got a lot of practice, you know? But they've been doing it for over 60 years. It's not like they're newcomers to the game there. Decent looking car. Let's check out the driver situation. As you can see, it's relatively sleek inside and modern. We'll start it up. Starts right up. It has all the fancy electronic stuff in it. A cool clock with not just the fake analog clock, but the date too. And I really like their screen in the middle, this Volkswagen thing. I like it because you get all the information right in front of you. It's got a nice backup camera, but what I really like is your map. It's right in front. So when you're driving down the road, you don't have to look over to the side. You can look straight in front of you, glance down, and get your map. No longer getting lost by looking around. It's right there, and you can always tell the speed. There's a speed over there. We're starting to move. Look, it went one mile an hour. Two. <laughs> Not a bad setup, really. If you want to play with the HB transmission, you can put it to shift yourself. Then you can shift it up or down. You can see there we go, M1, M2. But it doesn't have paddle shifters. This is more of an economy car. There's no paddle shifters. This is a luxury version, so it's got a sunroof. And now we'll back it up and take it for a ride. I'm nuts about the steering. This electric steering, not only is it responsive, but it requires almost no effort at all. Those of you with wimpy arms will love this car. It's got that 1.4 cylinder engine, little, but it does have a turbo. So what we're gonna do is floor it and see what it does. You can hear those wheels spin. It's geared so that it's got decent pickup. And being a modern Volkswagen, it really does handle quite well. I'll give it that. The ride, ah, eh, it's pretty much what you expect. It's not the greatest ride. The strange thing I found is that the front suspension isn't bad. It dampens pretty good. But the back suspension leaves quite a bit to be desired, as I'm going to show you. We're going to go over these speed bumps, and we're only going like 15 miles an hour. And you'll see the front isn't bad, but the back really clunks. We'll do it again. The back is much weaker than the front. The back suspension does not impress me. The front is good, but the back, a bit rough. But for a little bitty 1.4 turbocharged engine, as you can hear, it's a pretty smooth, quiet car. So it does have zip. It is a fun car to drive. How long is the zip going to last? That rubber-based timing belt instead of a chain in an interference engine. But if you've been wondering how Volkswagen sells so many cars, because they're somewhat lower priced, if you get the low-end one, you don't have to buy this $28,000 one, you can get a $18,000 one. They are zippy, they're fun to drive, and this thing got phenomenal gas mileage. Now I don't know exactly how much, but check this out. Here's the gas gauge, and if you notice, it's pretty much on full here. I just drove it a little over the speed limit to the beach in Galveston and back, put on about 120 miles, and it's still almost on F for full. Now, of course, certainly not a luxury ride inside. My wife who likes complaining about cars that don't ride that well. She didn't like it. She felt a little uncomfortable going to the beach and it's only a 60 mile trip. Of course, she's driving her old Lexus that she likes, but it's not the most comfortable car in the world. There's no arguing that either. So now you know the truth about this Volkswagen Jetta. After all, they went from the timing chain engines that had problems to a belt. That's why they went to a belt. It's a new fancy kind of belt design, yes, but they did have problems with the chains in the original ones. That's why they've gone to belts in this particular design, which is kind of a rarity. 
Most companies are going the opposite way. And as the saying goes, only time will tell. We'll see what these things are like when they're 10, 12 years old. <laughs> so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.